In a previous video, I discussed the concept of theoretical spot rates. And if you haven't seen that video, you may want to go back and watch that before you watch this video. Um, in this video, I want to discuss the concept of forward interest rates. Now, forward rates represent the market's consensus of future interest rates. And we can illustrate this by looking at the following example. Suppose you want to invest your money for one year. Well, as an investor, you could buy a one-year instrument, or you could buy a six-month instrument, and when it matures, buy another six-month instrument. Okay, and let's illustrate this with this following diagram. If you invested, for example, $100, you would get 1 plus Z2 squared times $100. Okay, you're getting this interest rate for both periods. On the other hand, if you invested in two six-month investments, you would get the six-month rate for the first six months, and then you would get this forward rate for the following six months. So in the end, you're still investing for one year, but in this case, you're investing in two instruments. Here, you're investing in only one. Now, before the fact, you would really expect to receive the same return no matter which alternative you chose. Because if that weren't the case, if it were the case that you knew or everyone knew that it would be better to invest in the two six-month instruments, then nobody would buy the one-year instrument. Its price would go down and its yield would go up. So we can set these two equations equal and we can solve for F. And if we do that, here we have the equation. This is the investment in the one-year instrument. You're going to get this interest rate, Z2, for two periods. So you're going to get a compounded return of 100 times 1 plus Z2 squared. And you're going to set that equal to the investment in the two instruments. Here you're going to invest your $100. You're going to get an interest rate of Z1 for the first period. And then you're going to get this 1 plus, and I've put in some subscripts here, 1F1. And what this means, and I've written some notation here, is that this first one means it's a one period rate, so in this case, six months. And this is going to be one year from now. And if we just do some algebra, we can solve for this, and we find that the forward rate one period from now will be the one plus the two-year spot rate squared divided by one plus the one-year spot rate, and then we subtract one from it. So here I have some spot rates. And again, if you haven't seen the previous video I've done on computing theoretical spot rates, you may want to watch that to understand where these came from. Each one of these rates is the rate for discounting each cash flow this number of periods. So for two periods or two six-month periods, you would use this rate. And this is an annual rate, so you'd have to divide by two for a six-month rate. So anyhow, we've computed all these spot rates. And let's take a look at an example. So if we look at that table, the six-month spot rate is 0 0.03. It's 3%. So Z1 is half of that. It's a six-month rate, so it's going to be 1.5%. The one-year spot rate is 3.3%. So that means that the interest rate that we would discount each one of those cash flows for the six-month period would be half of that, or 0.0165. So if we just substitute into that equation that we had, we get 0 0.0180, or a 3.6% annual rate. Now, if you sort of think about it, it kind of makes sense, because for the person investing in the one-year bond, they demand a 3.3% return. Why is that? Because 
they want to get the average essentially of the rate that you get for the one-year bond and the expected forward rate or the forward rate it's not expected it's an actual forward rate so this is three percent this is three point six this is essentially right in between three point three percent so you're getting half of that the general formula for determining a six-month forward rate would be the following so if we want a six-month rate that's what the one is here for one period but M, starting in period M, it would be 1 plus the 6-month rate in period M plus 1, okay, raised to the M plus 1 power, divided by 1 plus the rate in period M raised to the Mth power and subtracting 1. So again, let's just look at an example here. Suppose we wanted to calculate the forward rate, the six-month forward rate, in period eight. So we need to find the rate in period nine, the spot rate, raise it to the ninth power, divide it by one plus the rate in the eighth period, raise to the eighth power and subtract one. Okay, from our table, the four-year or eighth period spot rate is 0.05065, okay? Or if we divide that by two to get this uh, six-month rate, it's 0.025325. The four-and-a-half-year or ninth period spot rate is 0.051701. So again, dividing by two, we get Z2, the six-month rate, 0.0258. 505, and then just substituting into this equation, we get the forward rate, the uh, six month forward rate in period eight. And remember, this is a six month rate, so we should double it, we should multiply by two to get the annual rate of 6.01%. Okay, in general, we have an interesting relationship between forward and spot rates. And it's just mathematically, it makes perfectly good sense. The rate in period T is going to be equal to the current, okay, uh, one period rate, okay, spot rate, because we know this, and then times one plus the forward rate, times one plus the forward rate all the way out to t minus one period. So if you multiply, you know, if you count the number of terms here, you would have t terms, right? The first year we know, or the first period we know the spot rate, and then the rest of these are forward rates, and we raise it to the one over t power and subtract one. Okay, I've actually done this. It's quite easy to do on a spreadsheet. You just put in the formula and you can copy it down. And I've calculated the forward rates that are here for these different spot rates. So the forward rate, we already did this one. The forward rate uh, six months in advance, 3.6004. Uh, and if we go to the, let's see, we did one for the eighth period forward rate, 6.01, I took it out a couple decimal places more, 6.0128%, uh, okay, and I've calculated all of these. So from that previous table, let's just verify that there is this relationship between spot rates and forward rates. So let's find the fourth period spot rate using the forward rates. Well, the first period, we know the spot rate, it's 0.03, and so Z1, the six-month rate, is 0.015. Uh, so the forward rate in period one, if we look at that table, is 0.036004, and again, if we want the one period forward rate, one period from now, we divide it by two, it's 
0.018002. Okay, the forward rate in period two, again, if you look at that table, is 0 0.039165. Divide it by two to get the six month rate uh, in period two, 0 0.0195825, etc. And then we also have the forward rate for period three from the table. And let's look at the calculation. We just substitute into this equation, okay? Multiply those together, raise it to the one fourth, one fourth power, we'll get 0 0.019582 or 3.9164% annually, okay? We just take this and multiply it by two, which is in fact, if you go back to the table, you'll see is the correct rate. So it's, um, useful to calculate forward rates. In fact, forward rates are, are useful because it gives us an idea of what the market expects future short-term interest rates will be. And it's also a way for us to calculate future spot rates by using these forward rates.